us this morning. It is exciting to be here in worship. Put your hands together this morning with us. Those of you that are joining us online, stand to your feet and worship us with us this morning. Sing this with me. Go on. Go on and speak against my borrowed innocence. The judge is my defense. I'm going free. Right where the gavel fell, I heard a freedom bell ring through the heart of hell. I'm going free, I'm going free. If you're free this morning, lift it up, come on. And glory, glory, hallelujah, you threw my shackles in. Come on, we believe that. And glory, glory, hallelujah, Jesus is my name. Lord, I'm a brand new man, I'm going free. 
never been so free caught in your love for me oh i've never been more secure knowing you come on put that on your heart this morning hey i've never been so free caught in your love for me never been never been more secure knowing you say you never been i've never been so free so free caught in your love for me no i've never been more secure knowing your heart i've never been never been never been so free caught in your love never been more secure i've never been more secure that can wax and wane, amen? It's true joy, amen? That's what, that's what God does. That's The joy comes from high, amen? And we give you praise, God. We speak your name over our lives, Lord. We speak Jesus. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus. One name, come on. And over every heart and every mind, Within your presence, 
We're so happy that you're in worship with us this morning. Make sure you fill out your connection card and drop it in the bucket as it passes by. If it's your first time here, make sure you fill out your connection card and bring it to Info Central for a free gift. Hey church, there will be a merge night where the youth of the church will join the young adults for a night of worship. This will be held on March 18th. Don't miss it. Good morning, GCOG ladies. One upcoming event that we are planning is a painting night at Corks and Colors. This is going to be an amazing event for our ladies, and we look forward to spending the evening with you. This is a fun night you do not want to miss. Hey parents, this summer is going to be a blast for our youth. We have so many fun events planned, but our big event this summer is our trip to St. George Island on June 13th through the 17th. We are staying at a great retreat center right on the water, and there will be fun group activities, breakout sessions, and every day we will meet for a time of worship and message from some of our youth leaders. Make sure you are signing up your students as soon as possible. I'm so excited and can't wait to see all that God will do through this experience. Hey Church of God, Mike Anders here. I want to talk to you about baptism. Jesus said in Mark 16, 16, believe in me and be baptized and you will be saved. Uh, Jesus himself was also baptized. If you read in Luke uh, with John the Baptist, Jesus went to John to be baptized and John argued with Jesus and said, Lord, it's you that should baptize me. And Jesus said, no, I, I come to get baptized. It's the right thing to do. Maybe during the Daniel fast, uh, maybe God just touched you in a mighty way and you just you feel like you want to get baptized. This is a great opportunity. We're going to be having a baptismal service coming up very soon. I encourage you to mark the box on your connection card and we will get you the information. I will be in touch with you. God bless. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Hey, GCOG men. I'm here to invite you to the men's breakfast coming up February 26, 9 a.m. right here in the GCOG Fellowship Hall. There's going to be plenty of bacon and eggs, bacon and biscuits, bacon and sausage, bacon and... Well, you get the point. Hey, there's going to be a ton of great food and even a better devotion for the men right here on February 26. You don't want to miss it, so save the date, and I'll see you there. Hey, GCOG family, let me remind you to download our Gainesville Church of God app. 
The Church app will help you remain informed, connected, and updated on all things GCOG, including our live stream services, all our archive material. You're going to love it. The Church app is full of exciting and informative stuff. You don't want to be without it. To download the GCOG app, go to the App Store or Google Play Store on your phone and search for The Church app. You'll see a white box with a gray cross and it'll appear on your phone. Select and download it. When you open the app, it'll say, find your church. Scroll down and select the box that says, skip and search by name. Once you do that, all you have to do is type in Gainesville Church of God and our church logo will appear. Click and download that and you're almost finished. Now this part is super important. Make sure you allow for notifications so that you can stay up to date and connected with everything that happens here at GCOG. If you have any problems downloading or working the app, please contact the church office and one of us will be glad to assist you. Get the GCOG app and let's stay connected. Now that you have the GCOG app, let me remind you that all of our Daniel Fast devotional videos are available on the app. Since you've already allowed notifications, you'll be prompted whenever a new devotion is uploaded. Don't forget to like, share, and comment on those as well. Have a great day. All my words fall short I got nothing new How could I express All my gratitude I could sing these songs As I often do but every song must end And you never do So I throw up my hands And praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a hallelujah Hallelujah And I know it's not much Nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing Hallelujah for coming. We hope that you're blessed by the service. That's the only thing I want to know about. I'm not really care who's playing. I just want the food. So, um, but you know, it might be Super Bowl Sunday two weeks from now. But today is Super Bowl Sunday. Amen. We uh, the Bible says, uh, enter in Psalms 100. It says, enter uh, enter uh, the gates with with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. We should have our praise on when we come into His courts. Amen. We should be ready and have a gift ready for the King. The tithe belongs to God. So I encourage you: be consistent, be faithful in your giving. God is faithful. God can be trusted. So, so I encourage you to, to be bold and, and invest in the kingdom. God is up to something amazing in this church. Amen. So I encourage you to, to, to give and, and, and give generously. Uh, the, the last thing I want to share with you, too, is we got the cake auction at the end of the service. Make sure you guys go back for that. And if you're watching online, if you can't come here today, make a phone call and, and, and we, can, we can put some money in for you, too, to play.
pledge a free for you for a cake. But uh, this is a great opportunity to send some kids to Winterfest. It's like it, kids are going to get touched. Kids are going to get uh, saved. And it, it's, it's one of our biggest events for the youth. So I, I encourage you to be a part of that. Amen. Lord, I thank you for this church. I thank you, Lord, for these believers, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you just uh, bless them. I encourage them. I pray, Lord, over the offering and the tithes that come in. I pray, Lord, that you multiply that and just use that in a mighty way for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.
Let's pray together. Lord, in the name of Jesus. We lift high in the name of our Lord and Savior. We bless you today in this place. We thank you, Lord, for the surpassing glory of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that you have dominion over all things. We thank you, Lord, that we are your children, the sheep of your pasture. And, Lord, we are blessed and highly favored of the Lord. Today, Lord, we, come, we gather together to give you praise. Lord, we, we push aside everything else in our life and say that you are worthy of the praise. You are worthy of our time and effort. You are worthy, Lord, of us giving a sacrifice of praise. You are worthy, Lord, of, of pushing all of our other agendas and our thoughts and our ideas and the, the things on our schedule aside today and making this the Lord's day. The day we lift you up and praise you. The day we say nothing else is as important as the time that we spend with you. I give you praise today, Lord, that you are doing a great and mighty work. Something uncontainable. Something that we can't even get our head or our mind around, Lord. And for that, we give you praise today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Can you, can you give the Lord one more big hand clap of praise? Can you do that? Hey, turn to the person next to you and say, you look awesome today. Look at the person on the other side and you're going to say what? You look even better. Hey, go ahead and take, take your seats. Thank you for being here today. Thank you that on the coldest day of 2022, as far as I know, right, uh, you know, you braved the elements, you came out, and um, you came to worship God. We gather together to worship Him. Amen? Amen. I think it's an amazing thing when people get together to praise God. So uh, thank you for being here today. Thank you for lifting up the name of Jesus, worshiping Him in spirit and truth. Thank you in advance for staying for the, for the cake auction immediately following the service. We want these kids to go to Winterfest, don't we? And we don't want finances to stand in the way of that. And often the biggest obstacle, particularly for families that have more than one child, it's an out-of-town trip, several days. It is an amazing thing. They used to let me go as a chaperone, but I've since been, since been even nixed from that. But I'm telling you, the kids are going to be blessed. It's going to be a great thing. We're thankful to Mike and Pam Manders, the whole youth team who have put this together and done a great job. Uh, can you show Mike and Pam just a little bit of uh, appreciation over there for the great work they do? So, hey, we just, you know, we just need to walk the talk. We want them to be blessed. We want great things to happen with them, but we're going to have to walk it out. And part of that is, is that we want you to go out back there and overpay for a cake, right? We want you to go back there and overpay for some cookies or something like that. We want you to do something radical and crazy so that somebody can get saved, so somebody's life can be changed, so some young person can be renewed. Been a difficult time the last couple of years for some young people, hasn't it? It's been a difficult time for a lot of people, but I think the impact has fallen much more on young people than any other group. And we want these kids to be in the presence of God and be around other believers and to look around a room full of thousands of other young people and say, hey, we don't walk this walk alone. We walk with a whole army of people, a generation that God is raising up and blessing. Amen? Amen. So good. So participate in that. For those of you who are at home, fear not. You might suggest you could call in. I can do you one better. You have time to make the 1030 service and be here for the cake auction after that. Can the group people here say amen to that? Amen. That's it. Yeah. Get up. Go ahead. Get up. Get up. You know, get your jammies off. You know, come on in. You can, well, if you have to, come in in your jammies. That's all right. Come on in. We'll be here, back here at 1030 for another service, and we'll have another cake auction after that. We want, there's something about physically being there and participating yourself. If you just can't, then obviously we will make arrangements to receive that. Congratulations on those who have finished the Daniel fast, 21 days of prayer and fasting. Amen. It's a good thing. Can you give the Lord a big hand clap of praise for that? Come on. Let's give God some praise for the Daniel fast. Somebody told me, hey, I always get worried this time of year for you, Pastor, you know, for the fast and all that stuff. I said, you know, don't worry about me. It's a good thing. You know, it's not like, you know, I'm not going to prison or anything like that. I am starving the flesh so that the spirit can grow, right? So God can do some great and mighty things. I believe in breakout and breakthrough. I believe a lot of that's going to happen and is happening. We've already had some praise reports and testimonies of things that God is doing. So, hey, don't feel bad for me. Join me. Amen? And we're going to see God do some miraculous things. For those of you who participated, uh, you know, I, I, just, I just thank you for that. I believe that there's something about when we do things together, and I encourage you to, to trust and believe. Not, if you'll, you'll watch the devotion for today, don't lose the ground that God's given you. Don't give up on the habits of prayer and seeking God and doing devotions and, and things of that. And set a, set a pattern for your life to, that runs into 2022, and, and we believe that, uh, that God will honor that. Amen? So we'll pray over the, the things... Uh, the prayer requests and the needs that were that are represented here in this box at the conclusion of service today. 
When you came in this morning, you should have received some communion elements. For those of you at home, go ahead and get some grape juice and crackers or something like that. If you have some that you've received from GCOG, I encourage you to get them out. We will celebrate communion together at the conclusion of today's service. We want to consecrate this time unto the Lord and say this is a holy time. It's a special time. It's a transition time, but we believe that what we have sown, that there's going to be a harvest for those things that have been sown that, rep that are represented here. Amen? If, you have an, if, you have, you got a, if you're here today, you've got a bulletin, there should be an outline in there. I encourage you to get it out. Uh, we'll look at the passage of Scripture. Last week, had a great service, didn't we? We had the uh, state administrative bishop. We had Tim Brown, Rhonda Brown here with us last week. If you're here with us, great service, powerful move of God. Thankful for that. So today, you know, uh, we're going to jump back into the, the, the Scripture and see what God has to say for us today. So if you have your outline, you can get it out. I'll jump in by saying, start out with this. Early in 1997, Jeff Bezos flew to Boston. Uh, and he went to Harvard University, and he was going to talk, uh, meet with a bunch of the youngest, brightest, smartest uh, business people at Harvard Business School. It was called the, the class for uh, managing the marketplace. And he went in there to explain what he, his, his vision for Amazon. And he went in and he talked to all these young students and young people and these smart young folks. And, and, you know, and then what they did is at the conclusion of that, what they did is they had a question and answer period, and it basically, or a discussion period, I guess they would say. And they said uh, during that discussion period, they discussed with each other the viability of Amazon. And at the conclusion of that was is that basically they said Amazon was unlikely to survive the wave of established retailers moving into the online market. What they said in essence, Walmart and all these other people that are already established, they're moving into the online market and they're just gonna crowd you out. You're just a new guy, you're a fledgling operation. These huge operations, these huge real re realtors, uh, uh, they're gonna, they're, uh, retailers, they're gonna go ahead and they're gonna do the same thing that you wanna do, but they're already established. They're already in the marketplace. They're gonna be able to, they're just gonna beat you out. And one guy even said, this was a quote, he goes, you, he says to Jeff Bezos, he says, he says, you seem like a really nice guy, so don't take this the wrong way. But you should, what you really need to do is sell out to Barnes & Noble and get out of the book business while you still can. <laughs> now, it's interesting, Jeff Bezos' response to them. He says, you may be right. He went on with a very short explanation, which I won't read. And he said, I think you've underestimated the marketplace. And he goes, I guess we'll see. And here's the thing, he didn't walk out of there, he walked out of there realizing he, ain't he hasn't changed anybody else's mind. Those, the best and the brightest, you know, they were unconvinced by, by his presentation that Amazon would work. But you want to know what the most important thing was, is that when he walked out of there, he said, I guess we'll see. He, in essence, said, hey, you're not changing my mind either. And I think as you walk into 2022, hey, you may not be able to change everybody's mind. You may not be able to get everybody on board of what your vision is, or what God's told you to do, and what God's called you to be, but that's okay. That, that will always be the case. Jesus had that problem, didn't he? But you want to know what? Don't let anybody else change your mind. You may say, hey, I guess, we'll see. But, you know, we still are on a mission from God. We still got a calling and election in our life. We still believe that God is powerful. We still believe that he works in believers' lives. And you are not going to change what I believe, regardless of whether you buy into it or not. If you look in the, one of the scriptures I would use for you today, and we're jump to a couple of different places in the book of Nehemiah. Sam Ballot and Tobiah, they come up to this former slave called Nehemiah and said, hey, everybody's tried to rebuild this wall. It's not gonna, if it didn't work for them, it's not going to work for you. And they even said, even a, if, if even a fox climbs on it, it'll break it down. This, these stones will never stand. Now, he, he said, so here's Nehemiah's response. He says, so we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half height. For the people worked with all their hearts. He didn't argue the point with them about whether it was a good idea to build it. He didn't argue the point about whether the wall was sturdy enough. He didn't say, hey, bring a fox out here. I'll prove to you that this is going to work. He didn't do any of it. He said, hey, you, I guess we'll see what happens is what he said. You, I might not change your mind about what's going to happen here, but I'm going to tell you what. You're not going to change my mind about what's going to happen here. And I think the word for believers at this time in, in, in our point in history, in this time in this year is, hey, I get it that everybody won't buy in. But you know what I do know? Uh, we'll guess, I guess we'll see. Because you're not changing my mind about what God wants to do in my life and what he wants to do in my family's life and what he wants to do in our church, what he wants to do in our community and what he wants to do in our world. Amen. We are bombarded with all kinds of voices. And those voices would constantly say, hey, this just can't work. That's just no way. You know, the marketplace is already crowded. There's too much going on. You guys can't pull this off. That's old school stuff. It's not going to work. Don't do it. And I'm telling you, I may not be able to change your mind about what's going to happen in God's timing, but I'm going to tell you what, you're not going to change my mind about what God's going to happen in, in, in my life and my experience. Amen? Amen? Okay, 
That's the introduction before the introduction. Luke chapter 5 gives us a picture of what God wants to do in our lives. Particularly, I think, in, in 2022. The disciples have been out fishing all night. You know the story. This is not going to be the crux of the message, but it's a great introduction. They've been out fishing all night, right? Look at a person next to you and say, all night long. All night. They've been fishing all night long, right? Yeah. These guys, hey, these are the experienced fishermen. They've been out there all night long. They've been fishing, and the Bible says what? They didn't catch a single fish, right? Not one, right? Not one. So what's Jesus do? Jesus comes down and says, hey, guys, this inexperienced carpenter guy doesn't know anything about fishing. Says, hey, how about put the nets on the other side, reposition your boats, and how about put the nets down one more time? The decision has to be made then. Do I do what God wants me to do? Or do I do what I feel like I already know what to do? And he says, and Peter, and, but it says, the Bible says, but Peter obe was obedient and says, because you said so. And we know that in Luke chapter 5, verse 6, it says caught, so they caught such a large number of fish that the nets begin to break. And we know what do they do? They call some other guys over, and they filled their boat up, filled up Peter's boat, and they said it was so much that the boats began to sink. So at the end of the story, they didn't catch as many fish as they would have caught in that night. They didn't catch enough fish that they would have caught in that week. They caught more fish than they had ever caught before, so much so that they could hardly haul the, the, fish, the, the haul of fish in. And here's what I would say today. Jesus did something uncontainable. That's the title of the message today. Look at the person next to you and say, uncontainable. uncontainable. Not big, not bigger than it was before. Not something that, hey, we haven't seen like that before. It's something that boggles the mind that is uncontainable. Not what, they didn't catch a single fish all night. And at this point, God has gone way beyond what they could have ever expected or thought. And I think that's the picture of the promise for us today. Amen. Hey, a lot of us have been fishing all night long, right? We've been looking for God to do something. We've been looking for the healing. We've been looking for the lost loved ones to be said. We prayed and we fasted. We worked and we did it. We did everything we needed to do. We are experienced at this. We've been in church a long time. Yeah. And we haven't caught anything all night long. You want to talk about COVID? We flattened the curve a year and a half ago. You know, all night long, we are still out here and we're saying, hey, what's going on? And you want to know what? Those things would drag on and you get to the place of just exhaustion or you say, hey, it's not going to happen. And what that is, is the world saying, hey, this can't take place. I want to change your mind. And I would say, hey, you're not changing my mind about what I believe that God can do, that in his timing, there's going to be such a great call. There's going to be such a great blessing of God. It's going to be uncontainable. So let me ask you a question. Is that what you want? Is that what you want to believe and say, hey, this world's not going to change my mind? Other people are not, my family's not going to change my mind? I'm not going to let the experts change my mind? I'm not going to let any person or politician or anybody else change my mind? You know, I take my marching orders from God. Yeah, I might not change your mind. I might not change anybody else. I might not change my family's mind, my friend's mind, other people in church's mind. But yeah, you know what? I know what God is saying to me today. And if that's what you want and you say, hey, you're not changing my mind then I believe God's going to do something, don't you? I think Jeff Bezos did okay. I think he's making it, don't you? All the naysayers said, hey, it wouldn't happen. All the experts said it wouldn't happen. $117 billion at the latest count, personal fortune. I think he's going to make it. You know what? There comes a time when you got to say, hey, I'm not going to listen to what everybody else says. And I'm going to give you a couple things that's going to help you with this. You, one first thing you got to do is you got to walk by faith. You're going to have to believe what you believe, not just say it. You're going to have to walk by faith. You're going to walk it out. You're going to have to have it in your daily life. You're going to have to believe it. You're going to have to walk by faith. So my first point is this. Faith is embracing the uncertainties of life. Faith isn't just saying, it's not just, you know, regurgitating cliches from church. Faith is not saying, well, you know, I, I, I can't go under for going over. You, you can't. It's not just about the things that you say, though that is important. It's about you're going to have to embrace the uncertainties of life. Amen. Faith, is, uh, uh, faith is all about grabbing hold of something that you don't have right now. It's all about saying, hey, I believe it even though it doesn't exist. I believe that we're going to get a great haul of fish here even though they're not in the boat yet. Forty days after Jesus resurrected, he ascended into heaven. But before he left, he left a very brief but very specific instruction to the disciples. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father promised, which you've heard me speak about. For John baptized you with water, but in a few days you'll be baptized in the Holy Spirit. 
So the, the, the disciples spend the next 10 days seeking God, open-ended. Isn't that what the bishop said last, last week? He said, it's open-ended. He just said, go there and pray. He didn't say, okay, I want you to pray for the next 21 days. He said, I just go there and pray and fast until you receive the gift, until you receive the promise, until God does something. You just have to hang on. You're going to have to stay there. You may have to fish all night long. Hey, but you've got to stay. In, in Acts chapter 1, verse 14, it says, it says, they all joined together constantly in prayer. Acts chapter 2, if you're Pentecostal, know what that, book, that passage is about. Amen. Acts chapter 2 is actually 10 day, day 10 of a prayer meeting. So Acts chapter 2 is, is, is day 10, and suddenly this huge move of God, right? Suddenly something like never, uncontainable, something nobody knew what to, what to expect, or nobody knew how, what, what it was like. It was totally unplanned. They didn't say on, 10 day, on, day, uh, on day 10, we're all going to start speaking in tongues. You guys ready? We're, we got this? Okay, when we go in on day 10, we're going to start speaking in tongues. No category, right? They didn't know what, to, what was going to happen. They didn't know what was happening. They got up that day, I think just like every other day. They showered, they brushed their teeth, they ate cereal, and said, we're going back to church. We're having a prayer meeting. We're going to go there, and we're going to see what happens. And literally, the Holy Spirit rocks the house. It changes everything in an instant, in a moment. Amen. And let me tell you something. When God does something, that's the way it happens. Amen. God doesn't work in incrementalism. When God moves, he moves now. This is it. One, one minute, we're fishing all night. We're not caught. We haven't caught anything. The next minute, we have so much, we can't contain it. Amen. God decides, hey, I'm going to move on this day. You stay there, and you pray, and you seek me until that day. And when my timing is right, it's going to happen. You can't plan the miraculous. You, can, you won't always have a category for it. You remember I told you a story? It might have been a year ago about Tim Leatherman. He created this tool which we call the Leatherman. And it was this plier thing with knife in it and all that stuff. And when he created that, when he invented it, he went to all the big tool and, and, and retailers. He went to Walmart. He went to Craftsman. He went to all these people. And you want to know what they all said? We don't have a category for that. You want to know what? God wants to do something, and you may not have a category for it. I would dare to say, you probably don't have a category for it. Now, I would say that, hey, Jeff Bezos changed, Amazon changed the world, changed the way we shop. A lot of people, the Leatherman, it's changed the way we view tools in a lot of ways. I'm telling you, God wants to do something that's outside the box, that's uncontainable, that there may not be a category for. And I would dare say, you probably don't have a category for it. You can't plan the miraculous. You can't put it in a box. But I tell you what, if we see God with the same kind of intensity and tenacity that those folks did... You want to know what? We'll see something uncontainable. We'll see a great haul of fish come in. We'll see our lost loved ones saved. We'll see addictions broken. We'll see financial miracles. We'll see God do something powerful. I know, I, hey, I'm a creature of habit. And I talked about this a couple weeks ago. We crave predictability. Predictability gives us security. But let me tell you something. Predictability equals boredom when it comes to spirituality. If it all goes the same way all the time, we will fish all night and say, hey, yeah, we did our duty. Hey, we caught anything or not, it doesn't matter. But I'm telling you, it, it, predictability is not the way that God wants to do things. He's going to change things up. He's going to keep us close. Amen. Heard a story of a guy, lot, you know, lots of folks come to Florida for a vacation, right? Yeah, especially now. Maybe, maybe not this weekend. But um, the guy said, hey, we, my family and me, we all went to Florida for a vacation. They went to Orlando. You know, plan that trip if you're from up north for a year in advance. And all the theme parks and the places we're going to go, the things we're going to do, and live alligator stuff. And he said, they go and they pick up the minivan, and they're all crowded in, and they're driving down the road. And he goes, suddenly the, van, the horn starts blowing. What he did is he said, I stopped at a traffic light. The light turned green, and the person in front of him didn't go immediately. You guys don't do this. But he said, I just wanted to do the little love tap on the horn. And he said, it just stuck, went, Wah! and the person pulls off, and they're going, okay, 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 I'm leaving, you know? And he said, it wouldn't turn off, it just kept blowing the whole way. So they're driving down the road with the horn blasting. And he said, everybody's looking and stuff, and the, everybody's in the car, of course, the kids are all mortified and embarrassed, and he said, I'm slamming on the horn, the, the, the steering wheel, trying to get it to stop, and it won't stop. And he said, eventually, he goes, I pull into a gas station. And he goes, I get out, and everybody in the gas station turns around and looks at me, and I've opened the hood. I'm trying to figure out how to get this thing. And then he goes, and finally he goes, messing with it long enough, it goes off. It turns off. He goes, oh, everything's good. Get some gas. They head back out. As soon as they get back on the road, it starts blowing again. 
He goes, we're going down the interstate with the horn blowing as loud as we can. He goes, I'm not stopping again. He goes, we get all the way to where we're going. We pull up in the parking lot. People are looking. He goes, I turn off the car. And eventually said, I just disconnected it. He said, we went to the Magic Kingdom. We went to SeaWorld. We went here. We did this. We did that. You know, we, we did everything. We crammed it all into one week. He goes, you want to know what the most noteworthy part of the whole trip was, what we laugh about every single day now? The horn blow. Sometimes you just can't predict. Sometimes you just can't schedule things into your life. Sometimes the most unexpected things, even things that do not look like they're good, are sometimes the most memorable and sometimes are pathways to what God wants to do in your life. Amen. So you're driving down the road right now in your life and the horn's blowing and you're embarrassed or something's happening that you don't like and you're going, why is this happening to me? There's 10,000 minivans in Florida right now and mine's the one where the horn's blowing. Mine's the one that has trouble with the family. Mine's the one that has trouble financially. Mine's the one that has all the lost loved ones. Mine's the one that their marriage is in difficulty or hardship. And I am telling you, we will get past this and we will look back and we might even be able to laugh at some of those things and say, God came through. He fixed it. It was memorable. It was powerful. It was anointed. Life oftentimes is unscripted. And you, if you're going to walk by faith, if you really want to be a believer, if you really want to see God do something, you're going to have to embrace it. You, don't have to, you can't just say, well, I understand that that happens. You know what that is? I accept it, even though I don't like it. There's lots of stuff in my life I accept that I don't like. But if you want to see something God do, uncontain, something uncontainable in your life, you're going to have to embrace the unexpected in your life. You're going to have to say that, you know what? God takes care of me, watches over me. Am I going, coming out? Am I going in? He is there with me. He's watching behind me. He's watching ahead of me. I know that whatever I'm going through right now, that God is faithful and he can't be trusted. I have God's favor. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm an overcomer. And no matter what's going on right now, I'm going to keep my eyes glued on him. I'm going to trust him. I'm going to, exp- I'm going to embrace even this unexpectedness in my life. Doesn't mean you have to love it, but you've got to embrace it and say, hey, I'm going through. I'm going over. I'm not going back. Anyway, I'll slow down a little bit. Hebrews chapter one says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. That means it doesn't, what do I say all the time? Hey, the supernatural unseen world controls the natural seen world. This is all gonna burn, it's all gonna go away, but there's a supernatural unseen rule world that's in control and influencing this world. Faith, faith is the substance of things you hope for, things you have not seen, the evidence of things you have not seen. One translation said, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. You got a vision. A vision for what God wants to do. And that supersedes or extends past the natural world, the, the circumstances and the situations we face. You know, so often we focus on our energies on, God, here's what I need. I just need a, I just need a, be, a pay raise. I need a job where these are different. I, I just need you to touch my marriage, you know. Here's, and we spend, I think, in, in some ways, expend a lot of energy telling God what to do. We don't say it that way. So I'll ra- raise a hand. How many people here you tell God what to do? Well, no, I never tell God what to do. But when I do pray, here's all the things I need. You know? I got a list. You know what I think that does? It creates anxiety. Because we are so much more focused on the things that we need and the things we want and the things that bother us because we have to keep a list of that. Even if you don't write it down, you have just this mental list of Here's what I really need God to do. And hey, God's a loving father. I get that. I think you should pour your heart out to God. Don't get me wrong. But but for what it's worth, if we're not careful, that in and of itself creates anxiety. There's all this stuff. If you don't do something, God, I don't know what's going to happen. And I think you should be passionate before God. So you think, hey, you're kind of walking on that line. I know. But here's what I'm saying. Well, here's Matthew chapter 6 prescription for anxiety. Don't worry about tomorrow. Seek firstly his kingdom, and all these things will be given to you as well. Too many times we try to figure out what needs to happen before we seek. You know, Acts chapter 2 is a totally unscripted thing. But you want to know what? God handled the logistics just right, didn't he? The Feast of Pentecost was one of the three, what they would call traveling feasts. Uh, that the Jewish calendar had. It means that on the Feast, of, uh, F- Feast of, of Pentecost, the celebration of Pentecost, all Jews were supposed to come back to Jerusalem. 
That is the time when God releases the Holy Spirit, brings 3,000 people into the kingdom, 3,000 missionaries get baptized, and you know when they go back to their hometown and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. You want to know what? You can't script it as good as God can do it. You want to know what? You have to learn to embrace the uncertainties of your life and trust God that he is in control of it and that he's going to do something uncontainable in your life. Amen? Amen. That's number one. You guys ready for the second one? You guys ready for the second one? Good. You guys ready for the second one? Just drag it out of you. That's good. I like that. Hey, number two, Jesus wants to do something. What we keep, I keep saying it over and over again, but I thought I'd put it in as a point as well. Do something uncontainable in your life. Jesus wants to do something uncontainable in your life. Look at the person next to you and say, Jesus wants to do something uncontainable in your life. Now say it like you mean it. Jesus wants to do something uncontainable in your life. There's been a couple of times that I have, I, that have been to the doctor that I didn't get good news. Anybody do that? Okay, just me. I remember one of the first times I went is that when I, I started having this persistent cough, this is a long time ago, and you know, this kind of shortness of breath, felt like I had the flu for a long time. Went to the doctor, the doctor sent me to the specialist, said, hey, you got asthma, you got a bat. You have to take this medicine, do all this stuff. I said, well, how long before it goes away? He goes, it's never going away. Thank you very much for that vote of confidence. You know, I walked out dejected, you know, see myself, you know, in a terrible situation. I can't breathe. This is it's never, you take a medicine, you can kind of control, but it's never going to go away. You know, and then I remember the time, and I've testified to this numerous times in here, when I had an accident, boom, broke my neck. Went to the doctor, they did an MRI, and I said, hey, when's it going to get better? He said, it's never going to get better. You know, I remember the time that, I, you know, in, in, the, in, in my duties, in my job, I was running, and, and I fell, and I hurt my right knee. And I went to the doctor, and, they said, and I said, how, how long before it gets better? He says, it's never going to get better. And you know, there's a finality that when people tell you stuff like that, and you say, what do you mean? I, you know, there are things in life that are irreversible. And we like to think that somehow, some way, it can all be fixed. You can get the surgery, you can do this, you can do this somehow, some way. But there are some things in the natural life that are irre irreversible, right? And sometimes you're, you'll hear that someplace in your life. The, uh, the world will tell you, the enemy will tell you, hey, you know, this is irreversible. It's never going to get better. You know, you can't uncut your hair. You can't unburn the cookies that you made for, for, the, for the cake auction today. You can't unrun the red light that had the surveillance camera. You can't, you can't, this from personal experience, I can tell you about all that stuff. Some things are irreversible. But I am here to give you good news. That God is in the business of reversing the irreversible. Amen. Amen. Hey, you know, the gospel says that Jesus reversed the weather patterns. He reversed blindness. He reversed the paralytic. He reversed, at 2,000 years ago, he reversed death. The Bible, even this passage that we're looking at today, Acts chapter 2 says this, but God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was what? Impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Impossible. Well, you want to know what's really impossible in this world? Not that what happened to my knee, not what happened to my neck, not the asthma. None of that stuff is really impossible. What's impossible is for the enemy or for death to hold back the things that God wants to do in your life and my life. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Death could not keep its grip on the way, the truth, and the life. God, the, the devil cannot keep his grip on you. And the passage says here today, it says, they were filled with awe. The believers were just on the edge of their seat believing that God could do something. I had a pastor tell me one time, he said, one of my mentors, long time ago, he goes, when, somebody, when we get some new converts, he goes, I try to keep them away from the rest of the church people before they can tell them it can't be done. Sometime along this road, we get way too pragmatic. We get way too much like, hey, it can't be done. We, are, we have lost the awe of what God can do when we walked in this room this morning. Amen. Some of us walked in here thinking about what we're going to do when we walk out. Yeah. You ever seen those commercials on there about when you start getting like your parents and they all go to the game and the guy's like, oh, there's a parking lot and blah, blah, blah. And the guy goes, let's stop talking about par parking and leaving before we even get in the game. <laughs> and some of us are like that about God. Hey, what are we going to do after church? 
We lose the awe of what God is doing. Seeking God increases that expectation of what God can do. I want God to do something uncontainable in my life, don't you? Don't you believe it can start right here, right now? If we seek God, we press in, God gets bigger in our life. Amen. I shared this two weeks ago. It's all about proximity. How close are you to God? Because that's what this is all about. That's what Daniel Fast is all about. It's not about, oh, I'm not allowed to eat sugar for 21 days. You want to know what it's about? It's about how close can I get to God? Amen. Because when I get close to God, God gets big. Yeah. And when God gets big, my problems get small. And when God gets big, you want to know what? I believe he can do something that's uncontainable. I remember when I was just a youngster, I won some tickets to go to, a, to the circus. And they had inside this gigantic indoor arena, you know, three ring circus, did all this stuff. You know, I... I I wasn't over, overly impressed. It was okay. But you know when I look back, you know what I think part of it was? We, we had the cheap seats. The tickets they got us weren't like the front row seats. The tickets you won were the ones in the nosebleed section. And you know, I was up in the cheap seats and the elephant looked like about this big. You know, there's no video monitors or anything like that. You just see these little things moving around. Oh, here come the elephants. Woo, hey, everybody. <laughs> Great, awesome. Well, can we go now? You know, beat the crowd out of the parking lot. You know what happened that very same year? My dad worked for SeaWorld, and they had one in Ohio, some of you didn't know, as well as one in Orlando. And he worked there, and they, they had all these things, shampoo and all the stuff that's like they do here, you know? And, but the, one of the things they had there is they had a lake out there, and they had an elephant, a baby elephant, that they put on pontoons, and they said it was a water skiing elephant, and they would just advertise, just, come see the elephant water ski. You know, and they pulled him around in these pontoons, kind of slow around the lake. It wasn't that impressive. But you want to know, because my dad worked there, he said, hey, you want to go, want to go meet the elephant? Sure. It's a baby elephant. So they go out here in this enclosure, go inside, and this huge thing comes out. He gives us an apple, and I think you could smell it coming. You know, when we come out, and he's like all up in my face. I was about 12 years old, and when he walked, the ground actually shook. You could feel the vibration from the elephant, from a baby elephant walking. And here's this big monstrous thing, and I had this apple, and when I went like this, the elephant turned its head, and its snout just hit me, knocked me down. Bam. <laughs> I mean, power, massive. I touched his skin. He had kind of hair growing on him, but it was wrinkly and rough and intense and, imp and impressive and imposing. And you want to know what? That giant elephant that was way down there had no impact on me. But when I got up close and personal with the elephant, even the baby elephant, the one that shook the ground, you want to know what? It made an impression on me that I can still feel and sense today. Yeah. You know, you get up close to God, you'll feel the ground shake. Yeah. You start getting out of the cheap seats and start getting down there where God's yeah. doing something, and you'll see yeah. something miraculous happen yeah. that'll impress you the rest of your life. Yeah. God is huge. And when we stop letting him be so far away, when we start getting in there close, when we start pressing in, when we get through the crowd of difficulties and hardships and what didn't happen and the people in our lives, when we get past all that and the things we're offended about and the things we don't like and the people we don't like, when we get past all that, get up close and personal, you want to know what? It'll change your life. You're going to have to decide that God wants to do something uncontainable. It's not a possibility. It is actually something that God wants to do in your life right now. But you know what you have to do? You have to get a vision for that. You have to believe it. You have to walk in faith. You have to see it. You have to, you have to understand it and believe that it's real for you, not just for somebody else. And you know what that is? That's a vision for what God wants to do. That's a God dream. That's something you're in awe about. That's something that pushes you, excites you, gets your heart rate up a little bit. Because Proverbs says, when there is no vision, people perish. You know what I see in the kingdom right now? People dying. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're still walking. But I see dead people all the time. People just going through the motions. Yeah, I, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to completely give up, but there's just nothing going on on the inside. And you want to know what it says? You know what perish means, the original root word? Root word? Rotten. We're decaying, we're rotting on the inside. The outside still looks all together, but on the inside, it's all gone. And I would encourage you today, I would challenge you today, I would warn you today, stir up the gift inside of you. Amen. Decide, I'm going to recapture my passion. I'm going to have all about what it is. I want to get up close and personal. I'm going to go, I'm getting out of the cheap seats. You want to know what it costs more to get down in front? 
You go to some concert or something. If we would have went to the circus and paid for the seats, we'd have to pay a lot more to get down there close to the elephant. But you want to know what had a greater impact in our life? Are you willing to pay the price? To say, hey, I'm going to press through this. So I'm going to get past the social convention. I'm going to get to where God is because I don't want to be rotten on the inside. I don't want to perish. I'm hungry and thirsty for a move of God. Am I out of time yet? Close. Okay. I'll share, can I share one more story? Oh, well, there'll probably be more than one. Then one more at this point, okay? And then, and then I'll, I'll move on really quick. When I was in the, when I was in the Army, I, one of the things, went to Fort McClellan, Alabama, immediately shipped to Germany. One of the best things that could happen while you're in the military, if you know anybody in the military, it still applies, is what you get in the mail. And if you got a box in the mail, it's impossible to keep it a secret. You know, they, they, they do mail call. Chrysopolis got a box. We're all following him to his room. Open that thing right here in front of us. We want to see what that is. You know, oh, no, it's just some paper and stuff. No, no, it's not. Something. And I'll, inevitably, that was that. Food, right? I got a food, got a care package from home. Woohoo! You go, be open it, and all of a sudden, you know, cookies or cakes or pies or things like that, you know? And, you know, and, uh, you know this is a communal environment, you know, and you got to share. But you try not to share too much. Because you just know in a little while, you're going to want some more of that, right? And you gave it all away. So you kind of begrudgingly shared some out. And I remember this guy one time, he said he got something, I don't remember exactly what it was, but he shared it out, he did good, but he kept some of it back, right? And he kept it under his bed or kept it in his locker and it wasn't long, I think he forgot about it or something and it started to smell. And you know, they went and found it and it was like bad. You know, it was bad. And you know what? There, there, there is a time in our life when we need to decide, hey, when we are pulling back from God, when we're hunkering down, we're putting things under the bed, when we're walking away from experiences in our life and we're saying, hey, you know, I'm, I'm not there right now when, hey, it's just gonna create something that, that's gonna go bad in our life. You know, if you got an issue, you need to get it right with God. You know, you got an addiction in your life, you got a bad mouth, you, you have a negative attitude, you, you complain too much. Those are just simple, you know, those, uh, there's internal things going on in your life. I'm, you know, the Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. So often now we, we perceive that as mean that there's things that I don't have to do that other people do because God hasn't laid that on my heart. What that really means is God's gonna give you personal convictions. He's gonna speak to you and he's gonna say things to you and you need to respond to it. You, say you need to be praying for your family. You need to fast and pray for your lost loved ones. You need to step up over this way. Or you need to do this. You need to refresh your walk with me. You got to get in close again. You got to get out of the cheap seats and just watch it happen and decide you're going to get down there. And, and when you do that, God is going to ex exceed your expectations. Your hunger and thirst is going to grow and great and mighty things are going to happen or you can just shelf it someplace and let it rot. Hey, I believe that God wants to do something uncontainable. This is not about saying you're a bad person. This is about saying, hey, how do we get to that place where God does something uncontainable in our life that the enemy cannot steal and cannot tear down and cannot destroy? Can you say amen to that? Amen. Okay. What's the last one? Put it up there. You can't control the rain, but you can control, but you can prepare the soil. You can't control the rain, but you can prepare the soil. Can you say amen? I got my papers on the wrong order here. I'll get them right. But I, know, I, I pretty much know what I'm going to say. I think I have it under control. All right, you ready? I just wanted to pass the scripture. Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. Sow for yourself righteousness and reap the fruit of unfailing love and break up the unplowed ground. This is where I really want to go with this part of this whole thing. Here's what I'm convinced of. There's unplowed ground. And where there's unplowed ground, nothing can be planted. Where there's unplowed ground, you can't get the seeds in, and anything that's below the surface can't get up. And you know what? He goes on and says in the rest of verse 12, it is time to seek the Lord until he comes and showers righteousness on you. Amen. We can't control the rain. But you know what? We can plow up the ground. And here's what I think has happened, particularly in the last year or so. I think there's parts of us that have gotten hardened. I think all that's gone on externally has impact on us internally. And what happens is, and maybe even in our personal experiences where we haven't seen God come through, hey, we fished all night. You know, we've been, we've been fasting and praying for 10 days. No great outpouring of God. Nothing's happening. And what happens is, is that after a while, if we're not careful, we allow that ground to get hardened. And then once it gets hardened, nothing can grow there. Now, we can't control the rain. I get that. 
though we would like to. But you want to know what? God wants to do something in your life, but there's hardened ground in your life. I remember we were out, did an outside service out here. Remember that? We did it out in the parking lot. And you know, we started to do worship, and I don't know who helped pick the worship set, but the first song was Let It Rain. <laughs> Open the floodgates of heaven. And you want to know what? That's exactly what happened. <laughs> Start pouring down rain on us. We're out there like five minutes, right? We're in the first song. And I mean, it didn't sprinkle. It just deluged. It was like the bottom of, this, the, bottom of the heavens opened up, whoosh. And I was saying, you know, we should have never sang that song. But the reality is, is, hey, we don't control the rain. We can't do a rain dance backwards or something to make it stop or do anything like that. We don't control the rain. But you want to know what? All of our heart, part of our heart or our life is hardened. There's nothing the rain can do with that. And I'm convinced God wants to do something uncontainable in our life. But there's areas of our life where we've got to say, hey, man, I want to break up this ground. There's, where's the place where you lost the joy? Where's the place where you lost the hope, where you lost believing that God's going to do something uncontainable and miraculous and, and bring the fish in and change things and the Holy Spirit would touch your life, that you'd get a revelation and that you would hear from God and it would just do something. Where has it become too painful? And here's what I would tell you to do. You need to break up that ground. You need to say, God, I just resubmit all that to you right now. I just trust you with that area of my life. I believe that you're going to do something miraculous there. Here's what I'm convinced of. God wants to do something uncontainable. He wants to bring that great hall of fish into your life. He wants to change things. He wants the Holy Spirit to move in your life like never before. He wants to save your loved ones. He wants to change your situation in your relationship. God wants to do a great and mighty work. But I'm convinced, hey, what he wants us to do is to break up some of that hard ground. And as we wrap up the service today, here's what I want you to, here's the question I want to ask you. Where is that place? What's the place that's kind of hard and stony now? What's the place you need to soften your heart before God again? Here's what I know for sure. Here's what I know for sure. God wants to do something uncontainable in your life. I think he wants to bring the miracle to your life. I think God shows himself to this world through the church. I'm not talking about what we do in here on Sunday morning through you. And he wants to do miraculous things and supernatural things. The Bible says signs and wonders follow those who believe. Amen. I think God wants to, do, wants to show this world in the midst of all the confusion and darkness and uncertainty that there's a God who still reigns. And you want to know what he wants to do it? He wants to do it by demonstrating it in your life. And you know what? You know what? We got to do that. We got we to trust God for the uncontainable. We got to be okay with uncertainty. We got to say, hey, I know God wants to do something unstoppable. Not that it's possible that he's going to do it. And you want to know what? I, want, I'm, I can't control when the reign of the Holy Spirit and the power of God's going to be released. But you know what? I can break up some of that stony, hard ground in my life right now and soften my heart to Jesus. I'm going to break up the shell. The thing that I think protects me from circumstances and situations and bad relationships. But to really, the only thing it does is stop what God really wants to do on the inside of our life. All it does is deflect the anointing and the, the joy of the Lord and the peace of God. And we have, we, have, we have struggle and anxiety and all this stuff going on. And God says, hey, I can take care of all that. Seek me first. You want to know what? And I'm going to do something un uncontainable. I'm sure those guys were discouraged and disillusioned. Maybe those people praying for 10 days, discouraged and disillusioned. You know what you got to do in those times? You got to say, hey, God, I'm still here, man. I still love you. I'm open. I want to hear your voice. I want to feel your touch. I'm hungry and thirsty for a move of God. I want to get up close. I want to get up close to you. I want to feel the ground shake under my feet. I want to sense the awesomeness, the presence, of the almighty God, the power, the size of God. That stuff still thrills me. I still want to be in awe of all of that. And you want to know what? When we do that, God's going to do all of that. He's going to do it. He's going to pour out his, he's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh, the Bible says. The book of Joel says it. They reiterated it in the New Testament. But you want to know what? I believe that God, this is the time of God when he wants to do it in your life and my life. Amen? Amen? Will you stand with me? If you want that in you. Thank you for worshiping with us today. If you enjoyed the service, please like and share this video with a friend. If you have a prayer request or a praise report, feel free to write us in the comments. Send us a private message on Facebook or send it using our church app. We are praying for you, and we hope you have an amazing week. God bless.